my friend from Abide in the Word, this is what you need to focus on. This is what you need to hear. AbideInTheWord.com What is the one thing, I don't care who it is, I don't care if it's Dr. So-and-so, whoever it is, it is undefeated. Undefeated. What's undefeated, Corey? Well, this text, John 10. He says, guys, in the most emphatic way that a person can say in Greek, he says, they will never, ever, 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 I don't care who the scholar is, can't get past this. He says, and they will never, ever perish. Ume apolonti, and no one has defeated that text. Yes, but you have to be a sheep. We're talking about the sheep, you knucklehead. I'm sorry to call you knucklehead, but if you're not getting it, you're a knucklehead. Sorry, love you, to, love you. Listen, love you to death. Love you to death. I don't mean to be mean. I don't, I really don't. But I'm calling you knucklehead because you're not getting through your thick head. So he says, I give them eternal life. And he says, and when he says, Ume Apollonti, this is a subjunctive which says that the possibility of perishing in the future is negated. Every year I offer this challenge and every year the challenge is never met. The challenge is if you can disprove my Greek exegesis of John 10, 28, then I will either repent, I will preach something different, I'll bring you on. I used to say that I will even shut this channel down and just or dissolve every semblance of me on social media. And the truth is, I still mean that. I am looking for someone to refute this. Up till now, I have not had anyone to do so. And I mean even from scholars, so-called scholars, people that have seminary degrees who have background in uh, biblical studies, or even in Greek, I haven't come across one that has an understanding of Greek that has refuted this. So somewhere, somebody out there that is vehemently opposed to eternal security, surely, because there's a God in heaven who wants the truth, can find that this is incorrect. So I'm asking, could you possibly refute this text? If so, please let me know. Make a scholarly attempt or a give it the old college try, however you want to put it, please tell me how or why my Greek exegesis is wrong. Corey, you've read the Greek incorrectly, or your understanding of that grammatical rule, this emphatic negation of a subjunctive, that's incorrect. Well, so you have to give me, I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm pleading, give me a reason, show me why this is incorrect, why my Greek interpretation is incorrect. Okay, so that sounds pretty intimidating. It does. I mean, that's a whole lot of never-evers. He says that no Greek scholar has been able to refute his interpretation. So it sounds pretty intimidating. It does. But is this true? Does John 10.28 teach eternal security? Well, no, it doesn't. And this is very, very simple. We don't even need to go to Greek scholars. We don't even need the Greek for this. This is very, very simple, and once you understand it, once the light comes on and you see it, you can't unsee it. And Corey has been corrected on this several times. I don't anticipate that he's actually going to shut his channel down when I refute him. Uh, I think he's already made up his mind that he's he's not going to accept any evidence, any uh, conditions, any anything. He's not going to accept anybody's interpretation on this whatsoever. So I'm not holding out too much hope that he's going to shut his channel down like he said he would, um, nor am I holding out too much hope that he's going to repent. I think that he's made up his mind, but this is really for other people out there who follow him, who maybe have some concerns about this, who have listened to this and uh, been led astray by this. So does this really teach eternal security? Well, Corey makes the argument that right here, uh, in the Greek, it says, never, ever, ever, and then he goes on with all those never, evers. And he says, see, Jesus said that his sheep will never, ever perish. It's impossible for them to, that the actual possibility of them ever perishing is negated, so it's not even possible into the future. But what we need to do is focus on who are Jesus' sheep. That's what we really need to know. Who, who does this promise apply to? 
Who exactly are a sheep? Well, before we get to that, let me just look. Throughout John, he talks about Jesus being the light. And hang hang with me here, because this is very important. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. But he talks about Jesus being the light. He talks about the light throughout his gospel. In fact, all the way from John 1, uh, more or less, most of the way through. We see in John 1, 9, he says, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. And in John 3, he talks about whoever does evil does not come to the light, or Jesus, lest his deeds be exposed. And then we get to John 8, 12. So this is just a couple chapters before John 10, 28. Now, I'm not just skipping around. I'm not avoiding John 10, 28. I'm just trying to show you something before we get to that. I will address John 10, 28. Don't worry. But John 8, 12, let's just look at this. It says, uh, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. See here, this is in John's gospel again. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, right here, we see that there is a condition placed on this. On having the light of life, there's a condition. What's the condition? Well, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness. So somebody might say, well, right here it says that uh, you shall not walk in darkness. That if you're a Christian, you shall... You could even say, never, ever, 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 ever. Well, never, ever, 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 ever. Hold on, let me reset this watch some more. Ever, 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 never, ever, 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 never, 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 not never, uh-huh, yeah, no, no, not ever, never, nope, nope, not ever. Walk in darkness. That'd be fine with me. That'd be fine. That that doesn't impose any threat to my beliefs whatsoever. You you could put that. But the thing is, who, who is it that shall never, ever, ever walk in darkness? Well, it's he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So whoever's following Jesus currently has the light of life or uh, eternal life. So, but the condition is if you're following him, just like John 10, 27, the verse right before 10, 28, says, he says his sheep do what? They hear his voice, he knows them, and they follow him. So right here, let's just go ahead and plug this in for a second. Since John talks so much about light, and really walking in the light is synonymous with hearing his voice and uh, following him. That's that's really what it means to walk in the light. So if we, I I think this will make more sense. If we just stick with John's theme of talking about walking in the light and Jesus being in the light, let's just try this. This will help you kind of wrap your this. This isn't this isn't exactly to uh, be a definitive argument against Corey's interpretation, but this is just to sort of understand what John is trying to say. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the light of life and walk in darkness in here, and I think this will really begin to click. So. It could read just like this, because again, walking in the light simply is, is synonymous with hearing his voice and following him. So let's go ahead and plug that in. What if it said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them the light of life, and they shall never walk in darkness or perish. See, these are synonymous. Walking in darkness means you're unsaved, means you're perishing, and having the light of life means you have what? eternal life. So if we just plug those in here, we see that if you're if you're walking in the light, you're not walking in darkness, you're following him, you're hearing his voice. To this person, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand, and they shall never, ever, ever walk in darkness. Why? Why, why are they never going to walk in darkness? Why is the possibility of them walking in darkness precluded, even going on into the future? Why? Because they, they have the light of life. They're walking in the light. And the Bible talks about walking in the light. So right here, we see that you have to have the light of life. So think about it like this. Think about it like if, let's say, you were leading a group of people on a hike, and you were the only one with the flashlight. Let's say you, you were out too long, and it got dark, and you only had one flashlight. And you said to everybody, don't worry, I'm going to get you home safe, but here's what you have to do. You have, to, you have to walk with me, you have to walk with the light, and if you do this, you will never walk in darkness. You're, you're going to be safe, I'm going to get you home, 
And you're going to have the light so long as what? So long as you're walking in the light. Now, now just think about this. Just think about if somebody raised their hand and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have a question. And, and you look back and you go, yeah, yeah, okay, what is it? And he goes, well, so what if I, what if I stop walking in the light? Uh, does that mean that I'm, I'm still going to have the light of life and that I'm, I'm still not going to walk in darkness and that still applies to me? Okay, that, that sounds like a silly question. Okay, so, so what if somebody stops being a sheep? That's what he didn't factor in. What if somebody stops being a sheep? And he's going to say, oh, well, that's not possible. Well, that's not what the text says. And in fact, I'm going to give you lots of evidence that says that you absolutely can stop being a sheep and you can stop following Jesus. That, I'm, I'm going to give you proof so that there should be no doubt on this. But, and yes, disciples can stop following Jesus, as I'm going to show you. But... Um, so, so that's, that's the way to think about this. What if, what if you stopped walking in the light? If Jesus is the light, you stopped following him, you stopped walking in the light, does this promise still apply to you that you shall never, ever, ever, ever walk in darkness? Well, no, it doesn't. That would be silly. The, the promise only applies to you so long as you're doing what? You're hearing his voice. See, this is a, this is a current, present thing. You're continuing to hear his voice, and you're continuing to follow him. So we see right here, if we just read on a couple chapters after John 10, we see this same theme continuing. So I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. I'm not just making this up. This is a continuing theme all the way through. Yes, even past John 10. So you have to stick with the whole flow of things. John 10, 40, 46, it says, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. So l- let me ask you this. What if an atheist said, or, or just somebody out there said, okay, well, anybody, uh, ev- everybody's going to be in the light because Jesus came into the world. You say, whoa, whoa not, not everybody. There's a condition on this. What is the condition? Well, whoever believes in me. So here's the question. What if you stop believing? Does this apply to you? Are you, are you going to be walking in darkness if you stop believing? Well, the answer to that is yes. It's conditioned upon you not only just believing once for a minute for a nanosecond, but continuing to believe. And it's it's very similar here with John 8:51. Jesus says most assuredly, okay? So this is this is very very serious. He wants to drive this point home. Most assuredly I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Now, what if what if this says shall never ever 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 under any circumstance in the future ever see death? Well, I'd be fine with that. But look at this. There's a condition right here. We see a condition. If anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. There's a condition to that. So what if you don't keep his word? Let me ask you this. What if you stop keeping his word? Well, will you see death? Absolutely. But see, what Corey does is he plays on this whole idea of never, ever, ever, and this emphatic negation of a subjunctive is what he calls it. And he plays on this, even though, listen, you don't even need the Greek, one never is, is fine enough for me. You don't need to go into the Greek and, and all this stuff. If Jesus says never, I believe that at face value. Right here, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. So does Corey believe this one? Does Corey believe you have to keep his word in order that you shall never see death? That means obey him. That means that's synonymous with walking in the light. That's synonymous with hearing his voice and following him. Do you see, here's a common theme, and, and, and again, we're still in the book of John. We're still in the same exact gospel. So this whole idea of walking in the light, even in 1 John, we see in 1 John chapter 1, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light. See, John constantly talks about God being light, Jesus being the light of the world, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if, yes, a condition, Corey says there's no conditions in John 10, but right here, and and many more times I'm going to show you soon, there are absolutely conditions. So it says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, you know, if we continue hearing his voice, if we continue following him, that's what it means to walk in the light. If we walk in the light, you know, obey him, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So what if we stop walking in the light? L- let me ask you that. 
what happens if we stop walking in the light? Well, are we going to continue to be cleansed from all sin? Well, the answer to that is no. Is the blood of Jesus going to cover us if we stop walking in the light and we start walking in darkness? Well, no. He is the light. We only have the light as long as we're with him, as long as we continue hearing his voice and following him. Um, in 1 John 2, we see something very similar. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light or remains in the light. So you have to keep loving your brother in order to continue in the light. So you're in the light right now, but you have to abide in the light. How do you do that? Continuing to follow Jesus, continuing to do what he says, not only hear his voice, but put it into practice. That's what it means. Remember in, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that the wise man not only hears, but he also does. He puts it into practice. Uh, that, that's opposed to the man who builds his house on the sand. See, he who builds his house on the rock hears the sayings of Jesus and does them. He puts them into practice. Let's just look at it this way. This might help to kind of frame this as well. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. See, right here. This is just like Jesus said. He who hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. That's the same here. That's the same here. He who hears these sayings of mine and does them. Same thing as he, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. They, they actually do what he said to do. They, fo- they keep his commandments. Remember, Jesus said, whoever keeps my commandments shall never see death. That's a never there, but it's conditioned. So let's just, let's just look at it this way. Believing, you have to continue. This isn't a one-time thing. So let's just insert it into here, and this will begin to make sense. And I give them, who's them? Okay, who, 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 so who are the sheep that Jesus is addressing? And I give them those who continue hearing his voice and continue following him. You know, those who continue uh, hearing his voice and following him or putting into practice what he said. I give them, those sheep, eternal life. And they, the sheep who continue hearing his voice and continue following him, shall never perish. You see? Neither shall anyone snatch them. Who's them? The sheep who continue hearing his voice and who continue following him out of his hand. So we can look at this, we can just look at it in the sense of believing, right? So John 3, 16, whoever believes, but let's just look at it in the sense of those who believe, because it's not, again, it's not just a one-time belief and that's it. You have to continue believing, continue having faith all the way to the end. Now, what if you stop believing? What happens? Let's find out. Uh, So let's just insert this in here. My sheep, or who are his sheep? Those who are currently believing. Sheep sheep is just another word for a Christian, a follower of Jesus, a disciple. So a believer. It's, they're synonymous. So those who are currently believing, not, not those who believed in the past, but those who are currently believing, hear my voice and I know them. Who's them? Those who are currently believing. Well, what if you stop believing? Does this apply to you? No. And they, who's they? Those who are currently believing, follow me, and I give them, who's them? The believers, you know, those who are still currently believing, eternal life, and they, the believers who are currently believing, shall never perish. So hopefully this this is beginning to sort of make sense here, and just just continue to stick with me, please, because when I get done, there's going to be no doubt. There's going to be no doubt that Corey's interpretation is a false one. And he's totally just uh, ignoring other people who have come against him on this and, and said, no, you're wrong. And he just says, well, no, you, you didn't prove me wrong, and that's that. And then he, he, he actually goes on his channel and says, nobody's been able to prove him wrong. This is absolutely false. Michael Brown's done it. Uh, other people have done it. This is absolutely false. But Luke 18, 17, here's, here's that emphatic negation that he wants to tout so, so mightily and say that this proves his case, but here it is again right here, Luke 18, 17. Assuredly, I say to you, Jesus says, assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So he could do the same thing. He could say, look, uh, right here, it's the 
emphatic negation of a subjunctive, and therefore it means that it will never, ever, 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 will never, ever, 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 Hold on, let me reset this watch some more. Ever, 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 never, ever, 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 never, 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 uh not never, uh-huh, yeah, no, no, not ever, never, nope, nope, not ever. Happen in the in the future, and there's no possibility of it ever happening in the future. So you would have to deduct from that, if you want to go by Corey's interpretation of this, you would have to go, you would have to interpret this to mean that nobody, since everybody has rejected God at some point, they've sinned, right? So everybody's rejected God at some point, so that would mean that nobody, because he said that, no, there's no possibility of anybody ever doing it into the future, according to his, his interpretation. So you'd have to interpret this, that nobody could ever be saved, ever, 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 into the future. Okay, you might say, well, how is that? Right here, just, just slow down a minute and read it. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, which I'm sure Everybody has done at some point in their life. Everybody has rejected God and not received the kingdom of God. And most people, the first time they heard the gospel, they didn't immediately accept it. Usually it takes, it takes time. It takes hearing it over and over again before you finally accept it. I mean, that was my case. So assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom, that was me at one point. There was one point where I did not receive the kingdom as a little child. And Jesus says, will by no means, or as Corey says, never, ever, 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 not going into the, you know, going into the future, never a possibility of ever, ever, ever entering it. So was that the case for me? So because there was a point where I rejected the kingdom of God, that means that I can never, ever, ever enter it? No, see, Corey's interpretation of this is false, and he's been corrected on this, but he, he will not repent. He will not shut down his channel, and... He's just wrong. But let's look at another uh, angle. So like I, was, like I was saying earlier, another word for sheep is disciple. You know, believer, follower, Christian, and also disciple. They're synonymous, or a follower of Jesus. These, these are all the same things. I don't think anybody would really disagree with that. I don't think that anybody would say a sheep is different than a disciple. They're the same thing. Or a follower of Christ. They're the same thing. Remember, he even said, what does sheep do? Is sheep follow him? So they're followers. So let's just insert that into here and see, in, into John 10, 28, and see if this begins to make more sense of what Jesus was saying. My sheep or my followers or disciples hear my voice. Well, here's a question. What if you, what if you stop following Jesus? Are you his follower anymore? Or, or let's, let's ask this. What if you stop being his disciple. A disciple just means a student. So just like in a classroom, you can have students who come and go. There, there might be students in a classroom, and they may drop out, and they may not continue being students. So would they have a chance of getting an A if they're no longer a student, if they drop out and just decide they're going to party and just have fun and not go to class anymore? Would they be able to get an A then? No. So just like that, we are we're students of Jesus. We have to continue hearing, continue believing. We have to continue hearing his voice and doing it, putting it in practice. That's what a sheep does. So we have to continue following, continue being a disciple. What if we stop? Well, then this promise of never perishing doesn't apply to you. Because why? Because you're not a follower. You're not a disciple anymore. And I'm going to prove to you that you absolutely can be a disciple. You can be a follower and turn away. So my followers, disciples, or sheep, hear my voice, and I know them. Who's them? The followers, the ones who, are, who, who keep following, and they follow me. And I give them, his followers or disciples, eternal life, and they, his followers, disciples, shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them, you know, those who are following and continuing to be disciples or students of Jesus, continuing to sit at his feet and learn from him and hear him and do what he says. Those are never going to be snatched. Never, ever, ever. You, you can give as many nevers as you want. You can go on to infinity. Never, ever, 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 ever. Who? Those who continue following Jesus. Those who, those who continue sitting at his feet and learning and doing what he says and putting it into practice. 
Now, if you don't believe me, right here, John 666. So uh, I would imagine that Corey will try to come back and say, well, you th th these people were never saved to begin with because sheep will always follow the shepherd, always. And he even tries to back up and, and look at the context of John, and he twists it and says, see, that means that essentially they're going to be made to follow. God's going to cause them to follow. And he pulls... He pulls a quote out of Ezekiel, and he said, you know, where it says that God's going to cause us to walk in His statutes. Okay, it doesn't mean that He's going to force us. It doesn't mean that He's going to make us that we're just zombies, and that He's going to make us do whatever He wants. No, that's not at all what He's talking about there. Cause, cause means that you're going to, just like a teacher, Jesus is our teacher. It means that He's going to do everything in His power to cause you to do well, to, to graduate. Let's say if, if, you're, if you're going to Harvard, he's going to do everything in his power to cause you to graduate. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't drop out of school altogether and stop being his student. doesn't mean that at all. That would be silly. I, I mean, imagine, imagine a student raising his hand and saying, hey, teacher, you know, uh, you're, so you're the best teacher out there, right? And, uh, and, and I know you can get me an A. But what if I decide to drop out of school and stop coming to school? Well, I'm, I'm sure the professor would look at him like that was the dumbest question ever. I mean, how silly. I mean, that, that's, that's something very similar to how people treat John 10, 28. Well, Jesus, but what if, what if people stop following you? Well, then that promise wouldn't apply to you anymore. Do you see that? So a disciple can, in fact, turn away. We see that in John 6, 6, 6. It says, from that time, many of his disciples or his sheep, sheep and disciple are the same thing, Corey. They're the same thing. Everybody who follows him needs to listen up. Many of his disciples from that time went back and walked with him no more. Okay, right here, right? And, and this is in the book of John, let alone. So do you really think that just a few chapters later, so right here it says that a sheep can follow him no more. Remember? John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But right here it says they, they, they followed him no more. They walked with him no more. They, they didn't continue walking in the light. Do you see that? And, and this was these were disciples. These weren't fake disciples. The, the only thing that Corey, I would imagine, could say is maybe say these, these were fake disciples, but it doesn't say that. It, it says they were disciples or they, they, they weren't truly saved, well, then why were they called disciples? The, you just look throughout the Bible. People are not called disciples of Jesus, and, and they're not saved. You, you won't find that. You won't find disciples of Jesus who aren't saved. Now, what he can do is go back and Im imply this and, and say, well, they were just never saved, but do you really believe that? It, it, just read it for what it says. In that time, many of his disciples, Jesus' disciples— went back and walked with him no more. That means that they were walking with him. Do you see that? They were his sheep. They were a disciple, and they were walking with him. They were following him. So I think this is definitive evidence that you can be a sheep at one point and stop being a sheep, just like you can be a student at one point and then stop being a student, or you can be a follower and stop being a follower. It's the same thing. They're all synonymous. You can be walking in the light and choose to go off into darkness by hating your brother, like it says in 1 John. So then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You see that? You have the words of eternal life. They knew that they had to keep following him. They knew that they had to keep putting his words into practice. Why? Because he has the words of eternal life. They have to hear his words, and do them. They're the words of eternal life. What if you stop abiding in the words of eternal life or stop putting his, his, his sayings into practice? Well, then you become the foolish man who built his house upon the sand, who, who heard the words, but the only difference is he didn't do them. He didn't act on them. Do you see that? So now let's just look at the story in Exodus. Let, let's just imagine if Corey's interpretation is true. And, and what he's saying is true, that you could never fall away. You could never, there's no possibility of ever stopping 
uh, following him, no possibility of, of, of ceasing being a disciple or student. Well, let's just look at this. In Exodus, the lamb was a type and shadow of Jesus. Jesus was the substance, the real thing. So that's where the term Passover lamb comes from, back here in Exodus. And what did they have to do? This is, this is the type and shadow of Jesus. So what did they have to do? They had to put the blood of the lamb over their doorposts and lentils. And then what did God tell them to do? And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Now, let me just ask you this. What if, what if there was one person who just decided, you know what? Um, I, don't, I don't have to stay in this house. I can just leave the house. And he could have. There was nothing stopping him. It's not like uh, there, was, there was an angel that was guarding the door and keeping him in there. He absolutely could have left the, left the door. What would have happened to him? And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. It was a command. The Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. But there was a condition. You have to stay inside the door. You you can't go out of the door of his house until morning. See, that's just like us. We can't leave the, the good shepherd. We have to stay with him or else what happens? Then the wolf can attack us. Then we are in danger just like them. They were no longer covered under the blood, just like it says in 1 John. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So they were cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. By what? By putting the blood on the doorpost and staying there. They had to stay there. Do you see that? What if they didn't stay there? What if they went out of the door? What if they left? Would they have been protected? Well, I think the answer is clear. No, and that's just like us today. This is a type and shadow of, and in case you're going to say, well, that, that's just Old Testament, that doesn't apply to us. No. Listen, Paul makes it very clear, talk, referring back to the Exodus, says, now these things became our examples. Our, our examples as sheep, as followers, disciples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. This is a warning to us. And he says, this is their for us, for us as a warning. Then he says, now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, therefore, this is very important, therefore, he's talking to Christians here, therefore let him who thinks he stands, who, who thinks he's a Christian, take heed lest he, lest he do what? Fall. Right there, right there, guys. Paul tells true born-again believers that this was a, a warning and admonition for them in the Old Testament, that they needed to take heed. If, if you think you stand, if you think you're a Christian, this is what you need to do. You need to take heed lest you fall. That means go to hell. That's what that means. Just like them, they were destroyed. It talks about uh, they committed idolatry and sexual morality, and they were destroyed, and they tempted Christ and complained, and they fell. God destroyed them. That's a picture of what will happen to us spiritually. Remember, Jesus, John 8, 51, in, in the Gospel of John, whoever keeps his word shall never see death. Well, well what if you don't keep his word? What if, what, what if you stop hearing his word and putting it into practice? Are you his sheep? No, you cease being his sheep. It's very clear. Salvation is conditional. Now, Corey, several times, he has said that in John 10, 28, it says nothing about salvation being conditional. But friends, we know better. We know we can go through numerous, numerous passages in Scripture, and he says that he doesn't want anybody going to any other verses. If someone were to say that, yes, all of those are true, however, what it doesn't say is that you can't leave on your own. The problem is, if you could leave on your own, well, then what does that say about clause A? I give them eternal life. The word eternal life is life into the ages. So that means they don't have life into the ages. Or clause B, if you could walk away, then when he says that, and they will never perish, well, then they could perish. Did Jesus forget to give the condition for perishing? Or is Jesus being thorough and complete? Well, I think Jesus is being thorough and complete. I don't think we have a contradiction in just this one verse. And notice, there is no condition that says that if you keep being a sheep, 
if you keep believing, if you keep remaining, please avoid offering a condition that's not there. Well, Corey, you have to keep being a sheep. You have to keep following. If that's not what the text says, by the way, don't come back with, well, Corey, it's an if. If you do this. Well, no, you, you have to look at the Bible as a whole. You can't just only look at John 10, 28. I mean, you, you, you could make the Bible say anything if you only want to stick with John 10, 28. He says, no, no, no. See, see nobody can refute my theology but then he tells everybody, he gives everybody all, all these conditions. Well, you can't talk about salvation being conditional. Uh, doesn't say it there. And he'll say, well, you can't talk about any other conditions in other scriptures. You have to stick with John 10, 28. And immediately right there, it doesn't say anything about a condition. Well, I would beg to differ, but let's just look at this. Okay, if, if, if Corey really truly believes that all scripture is inspired by God. And as he says, if if one scripture contradicts, then like he said, just throw the Bible out and there's, you know, go have fun. Live life and just be merry. So we have to make all the scriptures fit. So right here, Colossians 1, 22 and 23, Corey says there's no conditions to salvation. Well, let's just see if there's a condition to salvation according to Paul. Paul says, in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith or abide. That's this word, abide. Meno is what it comes from. If indeed you continue or abide or remain in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. Is this not a condition? It, now, 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 Corey may say, well, but every sheep is just going to do this because Jesus is just somehow magically going to make them. Listen, yes, we get new hearts, but it doesn't mean that Jesus is just going to force us to do his will. If, if that's the case, then why do you still sin? Corey admits that he's still a sinner and that he sins all the time. So if, if, if God, if you're really going to put that blame on God, that he's really making you, forcing you to obey him, then why do you still sin, Corey? That's the question. Why, why do any of you who believe this still sin? I mean, after all, if you, if you truly believe that God is causing you to walk in his statutes in the sense of you're interpreting that to mean making you or somehow forcing you, then why do you still sin? I mean, is he not doing a good enough job? That, I mean, that's the question. If, if, if God's making you do everything, then he must be doing a lousy job because you tell me that you sin all the time. So, where, where's the disconnect? Is, is it with God? Are, are you going to blame God for your sin? Is, is, he, is he only able to keep you out of certain sins, but not others? No. You know this isn't true. Listen, it's because you still have free will. It's because you still can walk away. You still can walk in darkness. You still can choose to not walk in the light. You still can choose to cease being a disciple and learning under his feet and following him. That's why. It's you. It's, it's not God that's the problem of why you still sin. It's you. Okay? So right here, we, we clearly see a condition, but this isn't the only place. We see in 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul says, by which you, you were also saved, talking about the gospel, if, here's this word if again, if, listen, if there's no conditions to salvation, then why are all these ifs here? Why? Especially addressing believers, not 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 unbelievers, not a mixed bag of believers and unbelievers, no. He's saying, listen, this gospel that was preached to them, which you also received. He's talking about true born-again believers who received the gospel and in which you stand. Are these not believers, Corey? Are, are these not believers right here? By which also you are saved. This is not a believer. Okay, but he, okay, so this is a believer, this is a sheep, but listen to what he goes on to say. If, 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 if you hold fast to that word which I preached to you, if, if Corey's interpretation is true and God's just going to make you continue following him and he's going to make you continue hearing his voice and there's no chance of that ever, 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 ever not happening. It will never, ever, 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 ever. Hold on, let me reset this watch some more. Ever, 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 ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never, never, never. 
Nuh-uh, not never, uh-huh, yeah, no, no, not ever, never, nope, nope, not ever. Then what is what is the meaning of this? Why, why, why does there need to be an if to those who were already saved, if you hold fast to that word? If, if they're automatically going to do it, it doesn't make any sense. What Paul should have said is, well, you know, uh, you also received and in which you stand and in which you are saved, and there's nothing you can do that could change that. I mean, that would have been a beautiful place to put eternal security right here. Hey, you're saved, and there's nothing that can change that. You're eternally secure. Why didn't Paul say that? No, instead he says, if you hold fast the word, which I preached to you. And then he says this, unless you believed in vain. Wait, 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 wait. These people who were saved, they can believe in vain? Let's just slow down and think about that for a second, guys. He said they were saved, not me. He said they were saved. So this belief was salvific, but he says this salvific belief can still be in vain. Corey says there's two different types of belief. That's nonsense. That's absolutely nonsense. He likes to quote uh, out of Luke 8, where the different types of soils, and he says the soil that, that fell away, that bore uh, thorns and thistles, that, was, that, that wasn't true belief. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that he's lying, he's twisting the scriptures. It says it believed that soil received the word of God, just like right here. They received the gospel, and they believed, and they were saved. Very similar to what it says in Luke, 12, Luke uh, 8. Luke 8, 12, I believe it is. Look it up. They received the word, they received the gospel, and they were standing in it. They were even growing, and you know their faith was growing. They were saved, but Paul gives them a warning. Unless you believe in vain. He, he, he didn't say, unless, you're, unless your faith was, was never true faith to begin with. No. This is clearly talking about a, a believer, and he warns them that they could stop believing, stop being a sheep. In 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Here it is again. If we walk in the light, there's that if, it's condition. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if... If, if, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm, how long? To the end. And then what? And then, and then we're going to have the actual realization of eternal life because, listen, there's a past, present, and future tense of salvation. Corey likes to play on, on just past tense salvation, and he doesn't understand there's going to be a judgment day. There's, there's a current Bible talks about how we're being saved, and then we will be saved. Just like the kingdom... In a sense, it's already come, but in another sense, we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. So it's still coming in a sense as it expands and grows, but then there's also a sense that it's actually literally going to come, the millennial kingdom. So there's three tenses. There's three tenses, but Corey likes to just play on one and just ignore the other ones. No, we have to uh, hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm to the end condition. And then uh, lastly, we see Luke 9. This is full of conditions. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is a condition. Follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Well, why would you be destroyed or lost? How, how, okay, how could you lose your life? It's talking about eternal life. How could you lose eternal life if you never had it to begin with? Think about it. I mean, I mean listen, Corey can, Corey can finesse the Greek and do all sorts of things and, and make it sound somewhat plausible, but guys, the Bible talks about how to, to beware of these false teachers, to not be led astray by smooth-sounding words. And there's going to be doctrines of demons in the end times. And the Bible talks about how don't be led astray by philosophies of men, by by the trickery and cunning of men. That's what's going on here. If you just read this for what it says, Jesus says you can lose your life in the sense of eternal life. And then, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, see, are, are you ashamed of Jesus' words? John 8, 51, for example, whoever keeps my word shall never see death. Are you ashamed of that? Are are you ashamed of that being a condition? Are you saying, no, 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 there's no conditions when the Bible says otherwise? Well, let's see what happens to you. 
Of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there's some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. So what about times where it seems there are not conditions placed upon the believer? This is what Corey likes to, to say with John 10. Well, there's no conditions. Yes, there are. Or rather, it's, it's simply descriptive of saying, this is what sheep do. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. That, that's a descriptive uh, terminology. That's a description of what they do. Well, what if you, what if you stop doing one of those things? Well, you're no longer his sheep. It, it really is just that simple. You don't need all this Greek. You don't need to say never, ever, ever a thousand times or whatever. You don't need that. Listen, I believe never, ever, ever. Yes, you'll never be snatched out of his hand. You'll, you, you'll be secure in him. But the thing is, are you continuing hearing him and following him? So what about these places where, where there aren't conditions? Because Corey likes to say that. Well, there's no condition uh, placed on it in John 10. D- does there really have to be a condition in every single... So every single time Jesus, uh, let's say, gives a command, or every single time he says something, he has to list out all the conditions every single time? Well, you know, this is exactly what people do, like Jehovah's Witnesses, with the Trinity. They like to focus on one verse, like let's say, for example, where Jesus says that the Father is greater than I. Well, see, they like to focus on just that one verse and then tie everybody's hands or hands behind their back and say, no, no, you can't go to these other verses. Uh, let's just focus on this. He clearly says the Father is greater than I. End of story, case closed, he's greater, so therefore they say that he's not God and he's the Archangel Michael. But really, I, I mean, don't we need the whole Bible? Don't we need to look and see, well, okay, is there more to it? Because that's not the only time that Jesus said something about his deity or about his relation to, to the Father. So why don't we just look at all the scriptures? Corey, Corey says, no, 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 no don't, don't do that. Just stick to this one. Well, we're going to see why here in just a minute. Hebrews 13.5, this is one eternal security proponents love to quote a lot of times. They say, look, it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, you can do the same thing here. You can say, never, ever, 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 ever leave you or forsake you. And I'm fine with that. That's fine. If you, if you want to say that, if you want to do the same thing here and say never two dozen times, go ahead. But let's just go ahead and look right here in 2 Chronicles 15.2. See, when we look at all Scripture, what does it say? It says right here, he will be, okay, the Lord is with you while you were with him, you know, while you were walking in the light. If you seek him, he will be found by you. Okay, let, let's just see what happens when you stop walking in the light, when you stop listening to his voice and following him. Let's just see what happens. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Whoa, 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 wait wait a minute. But Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And there's no condition. There's no condition saying, well, but, you know, unless you leave him, that's what Corey does. So therefore, we can, no, 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 just, let's just focus on Hebrews 13, 5. Let's not look at any other passages. Is that wise? No, right here. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. So it says, the Lord is with you while you're with him. So what if you stop being with him? What if you stop being a sheep that follows him? Well, you're not going to have the promise of him not forsaking you anymore. Do you see that? And this isn't just in this isn't just in Second Chronicles. We see in First Chronicles 28, 20, it says right here, he will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So you could just look at just uh, 1 Chronicles 28, 20 and say, look right here, it says he will not leave you or forsake you, just like Hebrews 13, 5, case closed, end of story. But is it really? Well, let's just look at verse 9. It says right here, again, if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. D- does that sound like eternal security to you? And, and again, unless you're going to say, well, that's just Old Testament, go look up 1 Corinthians 10 again. Paul very clearly says that those things that happened to them in time past, you know, in the Old Testament, that was warnings. That was, an, that was for our admonition today, for us, for the sheep today, that we take heed lest we do what? Fall. So being cast off forever, that certainly sounds like hell. But even though in 1 Chronicles 28 it says, he will not leave you or forsake you. So is this a contradiction? 
Well, no, it's not. We just have to read the entire book. We have to read the entire Bible, and we have to make all these fit together. It's very clear that he absolutely will forsake you if you forsake him. You can't, just like a student, you can't say, well, the teacher's going to get me an A. Yeah, because he's such a good teacher, he's going to get me an A. So therefore, I don't have to come to class anymore, and I can just go party. I, I, I mean, does this make any sense to you? Would this not sound absolutely ridiculous? No. If a teacher tells you he's going to get you there, it doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you want. It means it's implicit that you continue coming to class and you give it a good effort. It's just like that with Jesus. If you continue following him, listening to him, you know what? He's going to make you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. But it's conditioned. It's not, he's not just going to make you do it or else you'd already be there. I mean, think about it. If just powerful enough to do anything, he, he would just snap his fingers and you'd already be there. You'd already be completely sanctified. You'd already be perfect. You wouldn't be sinning anymore. No. There's, there's an element of free will. Absolutely. It, it, it's implicit, and it's stated all throughout Scripture. So you can't, you can't overlook it unless you're willingly overlooking it. You can't just look at one verse and say, well, well, you know what, it's, it's not right in this verse right here, so let's just, nope, it, it doesn't exist. See, these are the tricks that Corey likes to play, and they're, they're despicable. They're absolutely abominable. Uh, how about Joshua 1.5? It says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. So again, right there, look, he'll never leave you or forsake you. But what about... 23 chapters later. If we just would have kept reading, Joshua 24, 20. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, you know, you go off into sin, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. Does this sound like, oh, don't worry about it. You're eternally secure. Or, or hey, God's just going to make you follow him and everything's going to be okay and he's just going to make you obey him. No, we have a choice. How about uh, Deuteronomy 31? Something very similar here. You can read this if you want, but I think you get the point. Something very similar here. Um, I hope I've made my point. I hope I made my point clear. It doesn't make any sense to interpret it the way that Corey is, for many reasons, for many reasons, because he, he likes to say, well, no, 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 don't, don't, don't look at any conditions. No, it doesn't have any conditions in it. I gave you conditions, Corey. I, I gave multiple, multiple conditions throughout Scripture, and even in the book of John. If, if we just look at John 15, for example, there's conditions. If you abide in me, you'll produce much fruit. But what, what happens if you don't abide in him? Well, what, what does he say? John 15, 6, you'll be cut off. You know, like it says right here, he'll cast you off forever. If you don't abide in him, if you forsake him and go and serve foreign gods, you go off into sin. You're no longer his sheep. You're going to be cut off. You will perish then. It doesn't matter if you used to be his sheep. It, it doesn't matter. Just, just like a student, just, just like somebody could say they went to Harvard for, for a semester and dropped out. Well, that doesn't do you any good. That, it, it does you no good. You, you can't go around telling everybody, well, you're, you're a Harvard student. No, you used to be a Harvard student. You, you need to go back into school, if anything, but, but you're not a student anymore. So you can't expect to earn a degree. Also, Corey said that you can never stop being a sheep. Well, again, John 6, 6, 6. Look it up for yourselves. Don't be deceived on this. Does it or does it not say that his disciples turned away and no longer followed him? Does it say that? Now, it's your choice if you want to twist it. It's up to you. You have free will. You can twist that and say, well... They weren't really disciples, even though that's what the Bible says. Well, they didn't really believe you. I mean, I mean you, you, can, you can insert your own doctrine into that if you, if you so choose to. But there's another thing. Corey says that, no, no, don't, don't go off into these other passages. Don't go off into these other scriptures. No, no, just stick with John 10, 28. Well, I think I've done a good job of explaining that, yes, it's, it's descriptive. His sheep hear his voice and continue following. It's, it's a present, ongoing thing. Therefore, it doesn't apply to you if you stop doing that. But I think and hope 
I made my point. I have many more videos on this that you need to check out. You need to dig into this and look at more than just John 10, 28. I, I feel like I've already explained it as, as, as well as anyone can expect, but dig into these other videos, look at other passages that absolutely destroy eternal security. I'm going to put a playlist on Once Saved, Always Saved down below in the description box, also on Faith Alone. Please check these out. Please go through this and check this out. Don't just listen to, to Corey and just believe what he says, because he, he, he really, again, he really likes to finesse the Greek, and, and, and he thinks that this whole idea of it saying never, ever, ever has, has just got everybody baffled and has just got it locked down. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Again, what if you stop being a sheep? And yes, we saw John 666. You can stop being a disciple. You can stop being a sheep. So uh, check those videos out. Reach out to me. Post a comment down below. That's all I got for today. God bless.